Am I holding the thing that's going to help smash the x86 PC monopoly? This is one of the first Windows laptops running Qualcomm's new Snapdragon X Elite chip. After a false start for Windows on ARM-based chips a few years back, this is the beginning of Qualcomm's big push into the Windows notebook space, promising equivalent computing performance to Intel's latest Core Ultras, but more importantly, the kind of power efficiency that we've so far only seen from Apple Silicon. The computer I've been using it in is Lenovo's Yoga Slim 7X, one of the first Copilot Plus PCs featuring Microsoft's latest suite of AI features. And it's a pretty typical device in this range in that it doesn't cost the earth and yet delivers a formidable bang for its buck, especially for any kind of day-to-day -day productivity workflow that isn't, for example, super heavy video editing or 3D modeling. And even gaming isn't as much of a non-starter as I'd initially feared, though as we'll see later in this review, Compatibility is still somewhat of a minefield in this brave new ARM-based Windows world. So this review is going to focus on two main things. First, the experience of actually using this Lenovo hardware, the usual things like build quality, audio, video, and all that good stuff. And second, what it's actually like to use Windows on one of these new Qualcomm chips, factors like performance, battery life, gaming, and legacy apps. So starting off with the external hardware, this is an attractive enough, if slightly understated looking laptop. In the navy blue color I'm using, it's more than a little reminiscent of the MacBook Air. With a 14.5 inch display diagonal, it falls between the two sizes of the Air in terms of screen size and weight. There's a pleasant rounded edge to the base here, and the lid has this stylized camera bulge up top or hat, I guess you could call it, that we've seen from plenty of other Lenovo laptops. It's fitted with a decent full HD webcam that's more than up to the task of zoom calls and the like, while also housing the additional sensors for Windows Hello. Underneath, you've got three rubberized feet here, including a longer panel along the back, which should help with airflow from the sizable grille down below here. Unlike the MacBook Air, of course, this machine is actively cooled, even if it is whisper quiet much of the time. The darker color means the chassis can become a bit of a fingerprint magnet, though that's something I noticed more on the lid than the actual interior. Maybe it's just the way I use it, but the keyboard, trackpad, and space around it seemed less susceptible to accumulating finger grease. I guess that's a good thing. Opened out, there's a pretty roomy keyboard with these trademark Lenovo-shaped keycaps, which on this keyboard, of course, includes the dedicated Copilot button for Microsoft's AI platform. And the trackpad isn't the largest, but it's still more than reasonable size for a laptop in this category. So this feels like a solid piece of kit, as you would expect from something bearing MIL standard 810H certification. Worth noting though that while this bears the Yoga brand name, it isn't a convertible in any way. It is 100% a traditional laptop, and you're not going to be flipping it over or opening the hinge out past 180 degrees. The Yoga Slim 7X is admittedly weightier than the otherworldly light Huawei MateBook X Pro that I've been using recently, but that Huawei laptop is kind of an anomaly, and the Yoga is definitely not a heavy laptop by any measure. The 16x10 display is big enough to feel roomy in a mid-sized notebook like this, and it's a 3K OLED panel with a 90Hz refresh rate that gives a snappy feel to touchscreen interactions and scrolling. One thing I did notice with this screen compared to some higher-end glossy OLED panels is it's a bit more prone to visible reflections. I don't think it's a huge deal, but if you've got it side-by-side -side next to some of Samsung's recent offerings, you will see the difference. Otherwise, it's a fine-looking panel definitely punching above the weight of a lot of others in this price range in terms of resolution and refresh. You've got a built-in four-speaker system too, along with Dolby Atmos support in this machine, though I found audio performance to be just about average and a little thin and lacking in bass compared to the Samsung and Apple competition. Not terrible by any means, just very average in this area. Connectivity-wise, you've got Wi-Fi 7 support, always nice to see, and Lenovo's packed in three USB 4 ports, two on the left, one on the right, all supporting up to 40 gig transfer speeds. And the right edge is also where you'll find the power key, a little awkward to reach this compared to the typical PC power button placement, but not a huge deal in my opinion. You'll unlock this device via Windows Hello using the front-facing camera anyway, which is fast and reliable, and there's a camera shut-off switch on the right edge for added peace of mind. Getting down to the nitty-gritty tech specs, this machine runs the mid-tier flavor of Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite, the X1E78100. There is a slightly higher clocked variant with a beefier GPU used in some other models like Samsung's Galaxy Book 4 Edge. 
The machine I'm using has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage, which is enough for pretty typical productivity tasks. If you're looking for more, for example, if you eventually hope to use this machine for things like advanced development or video editing, there's a slightly pricier SKU with 32 gigs of RAM plus one terabyte that should be a better fit. So does this chip live up to the hype? Well, mostly I've got to say yes. It's as close as I've seen to Apple Silicon-like performance on a Windows machine, and the difference in heat and fan noise versus a current-gen Meteor Lake Core Ultra is remarkable. Raw performance numbers in Geekbench put this around the same level as a Core Ultra 9 185H, while running considerably cooler and quieter. It's all powered by a 70 watt hour battery, which is pretty typical for these first gen Snapdragon X laptops. Battery life in my experience is around 50% extra on top of what I would normally get out of a comparable Core Ultra machine. That means long work days, even including longer video calls, are no problem at all. And with lighter use, you could definitely get into a second day per single charge. Don't get me wrong, you definitely can kill it off in a day if you work at it. You'll just need to work harder and longer than you would on an Intel machine. So we are looking at a serious step forward for power efficiency in the Windows world here. On the other hand, this efficiency is ultimately only possible because this is an ARM chip, and that introduces some pretty big compatibility barriers to overcome. There's a reason why the whole Windows RT thing didn't work out all those years ago, after all. For the most part, though, Microsoft and Qualcomm have done a phenomenal job smoothing out most of the day-to-day -day challenges for the Windows ecosystem on ARM. The Prism compatibility layer helps many x86 apps just run on ARM. There are ARM native versions of creative apps like Adobe Photoshop available, and Photoshop runs great on this machine, arguably better than I've seen it run on a comparable Core Ultra 7. Not all Adobe apps have ARM-ready versions available yet though, and a big one that's missing from my workflow is Premiere Pro. That's promised for later in the summer, and even then it'll run through Prism as opposed to being ARM native. You'll need to wait even longer for that native version. There are other parts of my workflow that ran up against some snags with Windows on ARM though. The Google Drive desktop app uses components which haven't been updated to support ARM yet. And the same goes for an app called LocalSend, which I often use to share quickly cross-platform between smartphones and other devices. Now oh, look, those are edge cases, but they just demonstrate that compatibility problems aren't a huge deal for Snapdragon PCs until they suddenly are, and then they really are. The same could be said for drivers, I guess, though I've had a much better time with various peripherals, even slightly older ones, on this laptop. Microsoft has clearly done a good amount of work behind the scenes, prodding peripheral manufacturers to get ARM-ready drivers out on time. Though that said, confusingly, these often don't install as standard or through Device Manager, and instead show up under Windows Update as optional updates, buried too many layers deep in a place that's very easy to miss. Definitely something to be worked on in terms of discoverability for these drivers, I think. So neither Qualcomm nor anyone else is pitching the Snapdragon X Elite as a gaming chip. Nevertheless, you can game on it with a few caveats. The low power of the chip obviously is one sticking point. Don't expect to be playing Cyberpunk or any other recent AAA title fully maxed out. Certain titles will just fail to work, either because they don't play nicely with Prism or because they use old DRM that also doesn't play nicely with Prism. And even when games are supported, you can often run into other compatibility issues like longer load times when they initially start up. So if there is a specific title you're looking to play, you'll definitely want to check compatibility on worksonwoa.com before you buy. With that said, most of the titles that did run on the Yoga Slim 7X did so reasonably well. Doom Eternal, support for which was added in a late-breaking beta driver update from Qualcomm, was just about playable on mid to low details around 1080p with 50% resolution scaling. That's significantly below the detail level and frame rate you'd get from a Core Ultra, but like I said, still playable. Other titles like the Hitman series were a better fit, especially with some tweaks to the screen resolution, and Hitman also supports Windows automatic super resolution feature for AI upscaling that's currently exclusive to Copilot Plus PCs like this, which is an added bonus. Bioshock Infinite put up an impressive performance at middling detail levels, giving me comparable performance at 1080p to that of the Huawei MateBook X with its Intel Arc GPU on the Core Ultra 9, with significantly less heat to boot. Bottom line is, it's a mixed bag right now, and you should probably treat any gaming that you do get to do on this thing as a bonus. 
The other major feature set of new Qualcomm-based laptops like this is the whole Copilot Plus experience. As well as the physical key being right here to immediately launch the Copilot Assistant, you have the pretty fun co-creator tool built into Microsoft Paint for fun drawings based on your own doodles. Windows Studio effects can enhance your image in video calls in real time with features like auto framing and auto eye contact. And live captions can automatically transcribe spoken words and even translate between languages. These are all neat, nice to have extras, but they're far from being a killer app for the latest generation of PCs. What's missing, of course, is Microsoft's Recall, the always on usage tracking searchable browser history on steroids that was recently delayed over privacy concerns. Despite all the controversy around Recall, there's no doubt that it was the most consequential feature of Copilot Plus, and so perhaps not surprising that its absence makes the rest of that feature set seem pretty thin and almost underwhelming. So is it worth jumping on the latest wave of Snapdragon X Elite PCs and the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X in particular? Well, generally this is a very polished package that more than delivers on the promise of a powerful PC without the heat, noise, and battery life compromises that you typically get from X86. Battery life alone might be a reason for a lot of folks to upgrade. But these are still first-gen products, and as such you'll want to be aware of how any early compatibility issues might affect your workflow. For the typical office-y workday and downtime involving perhaps Netflix or YouTube and little casual gaming, this is a great machine. But like I said before, when you run into a compatibility roadblock, that might well stop you dead in your tracks. If an obscure app you need doesn't run, or that old printer or scanner just doesn't have ARM drivers yet, you ain't using it. That's just the price of being an early adopter, though we'd imagine with future driver and Prism updates, those pain points should be addressed over the coming months. Both Qualcomm and Microsoft have a vested interest in smoothing out any compatibility issues as swiftly as possible. Obviously though, Lenovo, Qualcomm, and Microsoft are asking for your money today, not in six months time with some hypothetical software updates. So definitely be aware of those compatibility quandaries, but if you want to brave this new Windows world of fast performance from a low power chip, then you'll find the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X is a fantastic well-built canvas for the future of computing. That's it for now, be sure to share your thoughts on the Slim 7X and the latest wave of Snapdragon PCs down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.